Hi everyone, Lazy Fire here. Welcome back to the Hate the Player podcast. This is episode 53. Uh, we skipped last week. Three Toes was out of his mind drunk. Arnold was high on LSD and cocaine fighting the cops. Confirmed. And I was just hanging out at home. I'm a boring person. Uh, actually, Three Toes, you... Uh, I'm trying to remember if I actually was drunk last week. <laughs> no, you were tired, I believe. I think you were actually... No, you were busy. You had a birthday dinner. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you actually got your first batch of beer completely done. I did, yeah. Uh, you know, necessary beer chat to start off the episode. Prerequisite. Oh, I, hey. um, no, yeah, I, I, I brewed a uh, uh, an English an English pale, so like just a really good all-around pub beer. Um, it's really good. I like it. I've been drinking the shit out of it. I'm already <laughs> like halfway through my stock. <laughs> I, don't, I don't drink uh, puppy beers. Mm. Uh, mm, yes, mm, quite delectable pun. Mm. Um, no, it turned out really good. It uh, it overcarbonated a little bit, um, so I must have been off of my calculations a little bit. So I had I had two bottles explode in my closet, um, so that wasn't fun. I guess maybe that's the angel share when it comes to beer. Um, yeah, yeah. Hey. But no, it's really good. I'm, Drinking one now. Yeah, Ooh, pardon there, me. Whoa, there we go. It's overcarbonated. We can tell. <laughs> I'm a little gassy. Yeah. Mm. You know what? I I, uh, I don't think I told you this. I had a Belgian sour not too long ago. Really? Uh, you When you're talking about overcarbonation, you reminded me of that. And, uh, yeah, it was like a... They're like, pretty was, fucking fizzy. I don't fizzy. know what I was expecting. I don't know what I was expecting when I ordered it. It was me and my uh, my wife's brother-in-law. We decided to split it when we were at this restaurant. And it was like a 750 milliliter. And we killed that thing in like 20 minutes. And uh, it's just like really fizzy and kind of light. But it's it was like drinking the runoff of pouring water over like warheads for two minutes. <laughs> and I know that sounds disgusting. But it was actually a really good beer. I, like I don't want to like take away from it. It was really good. Uh, but it was like you get the sour and you get this carbonation and everything, and the carbonation, of course, just enhances the sourness of the beer. Yeah, yeah. They're like, I I can't really get aboard the whole like sour wagon. Like that's kind yeah. of one of the big new things in beer, and I can enjoy like tasting zone, like appreciate you know the taste and everything. But I'm just not a sour person. There are very few sours that I can like actually enjoy a full glass of or a full bottle. Yeah, like it's just it's just not my thing. I've um, never really liked sour anything. Uh, we had God, we had one at a uh, a beer festival down here a few years ago, and the name of the beer was like Garbage Water. <laughs> it, it, I've never had a more aptly taste beer. It tasted like like vinegar that had gone bad. It was just it literally tasted like you're drinking garbage water. It was disgusting. Uh. It's like Wonderful. why? Who who greenlit this idea? <laughs> Who's responsible? <laughs> so I could punch them directly in the face. <laughs> I, yeah, there's my favorite shitty alcohol uh, story is always when I went to uh, Wine Fest up here and I stepped in and they're the like the first booth you walk into. Wines that rock. This is our Pink Floyd wine. We're going to have a Rolling Stones one out later in the year. You taste it, and you're like, throw this in the trash. You've fucked up wine. Like, the rest of my day is going to be fucked because of your fucking start to this day. Like, a a bad bad wine, a bad beer, that can really just screw over uh, your palate for the whole day. So, yeah, I can feel where that garbage water stuff was coming from. (laughs) Uh... So yeah, it sounds like you did pretty well for your first batch. Are you going to do another one soon? Are you going to hold off and maybe that's, get something else? That's the thing. Yeah, it's I I definitely want to do another another batch before before summer gets here because one of the one of the crucial steps is after you boil it, um you got to chill it as quickly as possible to get it down to like 70 degrees so you can pitch the yeast because you know, after it's done boiling, it's it's susceptible to infection because it's right. no longer boiling. Um, and you know, there, there are, there are all sorts of gadgets you can buy or or make, you know, like this copper coil immersion chiller where you just pump cold water through it via your, your garden hose or 
what have you. Only problem is our our tap water in the middle of summer comes out at like ninety degrees. Oof. Like yeah, we have really hot water. Have you in the thought summer. of like chilling water beforehand? Yeah, you can do like a pre chiller and get like an aquarium pump to pump it through it. But even then, you know, you're only you're only going to get it so low, you know, unless unless you just buy it a shit ton of ice. Yeah, and, and spend a lot of money on that to try and keep the the recirculated water cold. Um, but I definitely want to do another batch for before that all happens, which is usually around like mid to late May. And I, I can't really decide if I want to try and do this one again and make a few changes to it or just try something completely different. Yeah, yeah, you got to give it a shot and see what else is uh, available, I guess. Yeah, you might I'm want probably... to decide to do a stout. <laughs> for, the, for the summer? <laughs> mm-hmm. Summer stout. <laughs> of course, I'm drinking Shandy right now, but I, I, Shandy, of course, is one of, is a beer mix, so it's uh, right not exactly something you'd brew. Um, right. You could always do, like, a Belgian white, I guess. Eh, I've really been a fan of white ales. Mm. Oh, Arnold's getting... They need to check words. check uh, your white ale I, privilege. I actually don't drink beer. <laughs> oh. Like, I've tried <laughs> shitty beers, nice beers, ales, IPAs, stouts, like, every, like all the shit you just said, I've tried most of it, but I, I, I don't know what it is. I just can't get into it. Now, I had a root beer beer. That was actually okay. And I drank it, and it was good. I've heard a few people mentioning a root beer beer lately. Yeah, I wonder it if it's the same company. This kind of moldy bread water aftertaste. <laughs> oh, wonderful! Hmm. But I, I think that's that's what you guys call beer. So, yes, that's when I think of beer, I think of moldy bread water aftertaste. <laughs> um, <laughs> this has been beer chat. Beer chat. 2015. <laughs> Brought to you by Piss Fossa. Fuck water. Oh. Yeah, fuck water has to bring all air. That's what you should name your beer. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> fuck water, water brewing company. Yes. yes. There we go. There we go. But you have to you have to make it like German looking like F U C H. Are you getting feedback on Arnold's? Yeah, I'm getting like yeah. some weird kind of resonant sound from Arnold's mic. It sounds like you're waving a lightsaber in front of your mic every couple of seconds. Or you've got a vibrator going on in your asshole or something. Yeah, it's like when I talk, it just vibrates even harder. I just turn you guys up. down a little bit because no, honestly, so I don't need, need to hear what the fuck you're saying anyway because it's all <laughs> trash. Of course it is. Of course, that's probably not your problem. You're probably too close to your speakers or whatever. Uh, um, I, it's, a, it's called headphones. Welcome to the year of yeah, 2015. I know. I was doing the shitty to my headphones. headphones too. Yeah. Um, so Arnold, have you been up to anything interesting? I know you had a couple games you wanted to talk about a bit. Well, I've been I've been uh, masturbating a lot. Um, oh, that's good. I, you know, I've tried to go a little more organic. Um, I used to use the conditioner in my shower, but you know that was starting to get a little irritation. So I've just gone back to uh, basically just you know spitting on it and going to town. Well, you know, it's always good to get back to basics. Yeah, you know, and and I feel like that's really the organic. And uh, really, just the holistic way to do it. Yeah, you want to. You got to be careful though, because the FDA is going to step into the uh, homeopathic medicine thing soon. Oh. So yeah, you got to be careful. Thanks, Obama. Yeah. yeah, thanks, Obama. Actually, you hear that it was mostly because they're doing that mostly because people are turning to alternative medicine because they don't trust the medical community anymore. Jesus fucking Christ. And but, so the but, FDA is like, we can't let you do this without making sure you're not putting stupid shit in your it's, body. It's like it's Bitcoin logic. And, yes. And I think that this is this is one of the problems, like with the the internet, capital I internet, and internet culture, is it, the internet has allowed like so many people who we used to ju- would, we used to we would used to look at and say, you're a fucking idiot. Get back in your trash can and shut the fuck up. Now all the trash can people get to uh, band together and meet other trash can people and then they think that uh, they have some sort of legitimate claim or whatever oh I cured my hemorrhoids by dousing my asshole with motor oil and lighting it on fire that sounds dangerous well I mean but you have shit like that and and that's the sort of shit that gets passed around who are you going to trust take take no kids don't do that or the guy that went to school (laughs) specifically to be a medical doctor huh uh, I mean, uh, it, it fucking kills me, dude. Like, I, I sell drugs for a living. I don't know if I've ever mentioned that on the podcast. 
and when I say <laughs> sell drugs, I mean legitimately. So uh, yeah. <laughs> I hear <laughs> not not legitimate. I not legit sell drugs, but legitimately through a company sell drugs. Yes. Yeah, there we go. Right. So what you're saying is that you work for Big Pharma and we can't trust you. Exactly. You know, that's exactly it. And granted, there are a lot of really shitty things that Big Pharma does, like uh, paying off, like, let's say you have a generic drug that's been out for 10 years and it's like one-tenth the price of the brand. Well, sometimes somebody will get the get the patent to the brand and just say, hey, generic maker, we'll pay you what you make in 10 years if you stop making it so we can make the brand-only version and everybody has to pay way more for it. America. America. But, yeah. anyway, off of my quasi-socialist rant, um, yeah, I've been playing been playing, playing some games. Games have been fun. Yeah. Um, there was this one uh, called Bloodsports.tv. It's a MOBA. <laughs> and, uh, it, I mean, granted, just saying MOBA kind of triggers me a little bit. And I think, what, I think what just about that? all MOBAs are bad. No, MOBA's, uh, it's mass, what is it, multiplayer, multiplayer online battlefield arena or something like that. It's something fucking stupid. It's yeah, all it's, based it, off of a Dota. Dota. Dota 2, League of Legends, Smite, uh, which is, like, every, every company has a MOBA of some nature coming out. Wait long enough and fucking Microsoft's gonna put out a Halo MOBA where you kill grunts as Master Chief from a third, uh, you know, isometric perspective. And it kind of, sort of, not really fun at all. Yeah, it's. I mean, the compu- community is every bit as toxic. I mean, it, it, for Dota, it's every bit as toxic as a Call of Duty or any other MMO. It's yeah, bad. if you think it, it right now, the biggest games in esports, like if you go and watch any tournament, I have something to say about that soon too. Uh, if you go watch these tournaments, the games that get the most views, like Counter Strike, uh, in their last big tournament broke a million views and that was like a huge thing a million people watching simultaneously in defense of the ancients it's not uncommon to get like 12 million people watching worldwide uh or legal legends will get like 15 or something like that there are magazines and websites devoted specifically to these games and they're basically microtransaction houses it's crazy yeah yeah but uh the the thing i don't like about Dota and those sorts of things is that is is Spurs ruin everything. Uh-huh. Once once somebody min maxes and figures out the the most effective way to do things, it sucks the fun out of the game. It's not yeah. fun. I mean, if you look at uh, look at real life sports, you you, you you can't have that. I mean, it it, it can't happen just by design. It's it's uh, whoever's trying harder or whoever's smarter. Or I mean, they're just by nature. It can't happen. But these games where like literally the only effort you have to put out is where you're gonna click and when you're going to click, you can basic. It, it sucks the fun out of it. It's just it's the same complaint I have with a game like Starcraft. Once you get yeah. up to a certain level, it's all about how many clicks per minute you can get in. Right. And it, yeah. it's not fun anymore. It's like it's basically uh like well it's obviously not a spreadsheet simulator, but that's about how much fun it is. So what's different about the game you were playing and actually talking very highly of? Oh, uh, it it's uh it's a MOBA minus what makes the MOBA not fun, which is other people. Oh. Um, you can <laughs> We've removed the human element to make sure you can actually have fun in the game. <laughs> right. Right. So oh oh you didn't build your uh your stupid arbitrary character this way? Huh. No, no. I mean, yeah. you can, uh, you can. Uh, it's the same setup as like League of Legends or whatever. There's only eight characters right now. I think it's a fairly new game. Um, but it's good. It, it's good. It's a five-person, uh, basically co-op. It's set in a post-nuclear apocalypse type uh, setup, kind of a Mad Max arena sort of thing. Cool. And you're gladiators, and you're fighting a bunch of uh, villagers because. <laughs> And the villagers are attacking you because uh, if they don't, their village gets blown up, huh. like with a nuke. And that's oh. the that's the break between every round is you're nuking the now empty village. Neat. Yeah. So you're kind of the bad guys. Yeah. Which is uh, it's fun. But uh, you have your your, your basic, basic tank tank which uh, absorbs. But I, I really feel like I shouldn't have to explain what a tank is. No, uh, I don't. <laughs> 
you have your DPS, your damage, damage healers. You have your crowd control, and uh, you have your uh, your healers. So it, 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 it's good. It's good. It's it's learning curve is not too bad if you played any of those sorts of games before. Uh, it's just it's basically a League of Legends clone or something like that, except without people and actually challenging AI. So huh. yeah, well, yeah. I forgot what I forgot that those sorts of games can actually be fun. Well, neat. I mean, that's always uh, it's always nice to find those little things. Is that a early access game? Is that a full release? Uh, I, be- I believe it is a full release. Yeah, it is. Um, uh, Hell- uh, Hellbender, one of our friends, bought a bought a five pack and got it for me because God knows I would never buy a fucking MOBA. Yeah. But yeah. um, but it's good, and I, I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, I it's also. Oh, moving moving on to the next thing. Uh, I also got a game called it's uh, R. God damn it! I can't remember. But Go it's good. find it. It's it's like uh, it's Binding of Isaac. Oh, our darker purpose. So think okay. uh, it, it's like Binding of Isaac, which we affect, affectionately call Poop Zelda because it's like Zelda but with poop. Right. Um, <laughs> it's basically exactly Binding of Isaac, but you play. This Wednesday, Wednesday Adams-looking character in um, okay. in uh, in the English boarding school, where uh, all the teachers and faculty disappeared, and the students split up into three three factions, and the other two factions ganged up on one and killed everybody except for the player you're you're playing as. Yeah. So it's basically Lord of the Flies. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but Zelda, but I mean Binding of Isaac. Ish, ish. Uh, be, really pretty uh, hand go, hand drawn graphics. The animation's a little wonky, but but it's a fun game. I mean, if you like Binding of Isaac, yeah, this is basically mm-hmm. different Binding of Isaac with different stuff. Yeah. But otherwise, yeah. it's 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 a, it's more RPG ish than Binding of Isaac, I'd say, because instead of health or instead of hearts, you actually have numerical health, and you can. Uh, you don't really have a choice of how you level up, but with the the stuff you get can give you more health, more more range, more attack speed, more damage, etc., etc., etc. Yeah. So cool. It is yeah. a good game, and it was cheap. I think it was only like three bucks right now, but it's on sale. Oh, so neat. Yeah, nice. Speaking of on sale, Hardline is twenty four dollars or something like that. <laughs> it's got like four thousand people playing it. Yeah. I don't re- I don't regret my purchase. That's mostly because Grand Theft Auto just came out. Oh, uh, that that's the dude. I I spend I, I I would sit down and spend an hour watching my friend play that. Yeah, and so like me and everyone I know has not stopped playing uh, Grand Theft Auto since it came out. So I I'm not at all surprised that there's no one playing Hardline. Well, right I mean, now. there's so much mm. different shit you can do in it. I yeah. Am, hey. You guys remember when we had this exact same conversation a year ago when I was playing it? Yeah, but and I kept telling myself <laughs> I wasn't going to buy it. Just like Hardline, huh? Oh, funny, oh, well. funny thing, funny thing, sorry to segue back to Hardline. Um, I was looking, and something like 8% of Battlefield 4 players, or no, 13% player of uh, Battlefield 4 players are still active, and that gives that means like something like 3 million players on average. Yeah. Well, apparently it has more players than Hardline does, and 80% of the players are active on that. Yeah, yeah. That game did not sell well. I, I mean, uh, it, I don't know why that's surprising at this point. But it's uh, it's kind of sad to me, because apparently in every respect, Hardline's actually a better game. But the I thing would... is, them fucking up with Battlefield 4, it's like Hardline's paying for it now. Yeah, and that's, I think, going to be... That's going to be something that Star Wars, uh, when that when Battlefront comes out, they're already dealing with this in a lot of ways. Uh, when that comes out, oh my god, they're going to have to fucking explain themselves. Like, listen, we know we were the ones that fucked up this series, Battlefield 4. We know that DICE, you know, DICE OP, or OG DICE, is what fucked up this last one. So, like, here, listen, we're going to do this right. I know this game's rushed. They've actually admitted that they're not going to release the full game. Like, when you buy the game in November, that is not the entire game. They're going to be adding, like, free content upgrades to it after it comes out because it's, quote, not the game we want to release. They're being forced by a deadline to release Again. that game when God they are. damn it. 
And, like, because they have to tie in with the movies. They said they have to tie in with the movies and they can't afford a delay. It has to be out, like, a month before the movie because it's got some of its campaign stuff or whatever has uh, movie-related stuff in it, like spoilers for the movies or, like, mov- uh, like, stuff that sets up the movies. So they need to have something for the movies. And so EA is, re- like, contractually obligated to make them release it for them. Uh, I mean, I can understand. I mean, at least it's not an arbitrary deadline. But God, that's ugh. it's it, it, yeah. And you know, people, someone grabbed the status uh, or the information from Battlefront Two and compared it to uh, Battle uh, Battlefront that's coming out. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh yeah, Battlefront Two had you know eight game modes. It had. 64 players on PC. It had 32 maps. It had, uh, you know, bots. It had a campaign mode and all this stuff. And they're like, what does Battlefront now have? Eight maps, then more with DLC. And like, they're just going through it. And I, one of the things that really bugs me about that is that that is almost completely disingenuous towards what was coming out in the PS2 era versus what comes out now. Like, you can't go and just, like, grab something from 13 years ago and, look, it doesn't add up. The numbers don't add up, man. And, like, some sort of weird conspiracy theorist. Mm -hmm. Things have fucking changed. Gamers, the people who buy these things, whatever they want to call themselves, have changed it because they are dumb enough, or we're dumb enough, I don't know, to just throw money at shit because the people who grew up on video games now have disposable income or children and no disposable income. It does that, I guess that matters. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, they're just like, people just throw money at stuff and they don't think about it. And because of the popularity of cell phone and tablet games, it's not uncommon to have like these microtransactions and like, you know, parceling out content and putting stuff behind the paywalls within a game now. And complaining about it because Battlefield or Battlefront's doing it is just basically punishing EA for having to operate in a system that exists now. Like, EA, yes, definitely part of what created it, but if you want to blame somebody, go and look at the fucking Call of Duty 4 DLC, how it sold really well, and how when it came time to put out more DLC for Call of Duty games, they fucking pumped out these content packages and did yearly subscriptions and how every franchise is now on that. Mm-hmm. Every franchise. Assassin's Creed, you can buy a fucking franchise pack for it and, like, all this other shit. Like, if you blame EA for operating in a profitable environment, then you're... Like, I don't know what to tell you. They have... Creating shitty games or games that don't work, yeah, blame them for that. Blame them for releasing games ahead of deadlines or, or setting hard deadlines two and three years in advance. Blame them for that because that's stupid, shitty business practices that no one should engage in. But you can't blame them for operating in the norm. Oh, no, no. I mean, and we've had this talk too. I mean, the price of video games has not actually gone up. So, I, I mean, I'm, I'm okay. The only thing I wish I'd see a return to is more modding tools. But, of course, then they're competing against themselves. So... Right, and I, I think Bethesda has done a great job making sure people are interested in modding. Uh, uh, and do, you know, do we want to? Do we? I feel like this is good segue. Well, to touch when you mentioned mods, when you mentioned mods, you got on it. So if you don't know, you need to know. Uh, recently, Valve decided that it would be a good idea to uh, give people the option to pay for mods in the Steam Workshop, and it only is effective uh, or in effect right now with Skyrim. Which is, by, you know, just so you have a heads up, a three-year-old, four-year-old game now. came out in, like, 2011, right? But now you have to pay if you want to have all your characters be naked ponies. Yep. (laughs) Not really. Nexus still exists. Valve has said uh, directly to the guy who, uh, Gabe Newell, who, by, for all intents and purposes, is, is Valve... Uh, said to Robin, the guy who runs Nexus, that he is not planning on like shutting him out of the industry or anything like that. They'd like to work together more than anything else. This is what Valve envisions this as, and who knows if this is true, is more of a, a way for people to reward people who are making mods and such with some form of monetary compensa- compensation for things that they enjoy that they enjoy that these guys created which is well and good, 
but then it came out that Valve takes 75% of the mod revenue, doesn't monitor for quality or anything like that, has had people just download mods and then upload them to Steam as their own things uh, with like slight tweaks. So it's it's like uh, you're trying to monetize something that since it's really began has not been monetized. People, of course, like want to get paid, and there's been donate buttons and donate suggestions for these things for years, but you know, most people just do this because they really like the game, and they have a really cool idea, and they want to see it implemented, and uh, if they get some money on the side, you know, that's okay for them, but you have to really question why is Valve getting into this, and does this mean that when you buy a game in a couple of years, there will be an ELUA, ELUA on the damn thing that says if you buy mods, they have to come from Steam. Like, is that going to be a problem? Is that going to be eventually we're going to just, they're going to knock these guys who don't want to uh, make mods that go through Steam Workshop stuff, are they going to knock them right out of the fucking th- equation? You know, how what's going to happen? What's the end game here? Uh, but Gabe, Gabe Newell did a, uh, a Reddit question and answer segment yeah. when he was... Yeah, I, yeah. I see that. Oh, he got <laughs> trashed so fucking hard. Oh, imagine that. Here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read you how he started it. On yeah. Thursday, I was flying back from L.A. When I landed, I had 3,500 new messages. Hmm. Looks like we did something to piss off the internet. Yesterday, I was distracted as I had to see my surgeon about a blister in my eye. Hashtag, fuse dystrophy shocks. But I got some background on the paid mod issues. So here I am, probably a day late, to make sure that people are pissed off. They're at least pissed off for the right reasons. Oh, yeah, he tried to walk back some stuff and, like, oh, no, we're not trying to do this or that. Only 18,632 comments. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It it has not gone well. It has not gone well for Valve. Uh, There's a lot of questions about why they did this. And, I mean, they've already been pissing off some people with green light stuff where there's, like, some really dubious quality games getting through. Uh... And, of course, you know, that's community-driven. If the community wants these games to get through, then they'll vote for them. But there's nothing that stops people from creating a bunch of free Steam accounts and voting for their own games to get them to green light. Uh, so, you know, it's it, it's one of those things where any company that gets as big and as beloved as Valve has been for the last few years... Uh, especially among PC gamers, because PC gaming is, believe it or not, on a pretty serious incline right now. Um, so people have, like, if you ever go to Reddit's uh, our PC Master Race uh, fucking white rights uh, fuck all women <laughs> bullshit parade, I, seriously, I one of the videos I put up, uh, or one of these podcasts, I used a screenshot I took from uh, PC Master Race where because Intel had partnered with uh, uh, Anita Sarkeesian's organization, people were like, I'm going to buy nothing but AMD processors from now on. And you go through the guy's comment history, he's just trashing AMD processors. But because Intel decided to do a nothing partnership with a group that you somewhat disagree with because you're a fucking moron who can't just handle people having different opinions than you, you had to fucking go and say you're going to boycott a company. Like, PC Mastery, go to hell. You guys, really, you, you make it look like we all don't, like, you know, we all live under rocks and hate women. It's not really great. Um, anyways, uh, now that I'm off of that uh, tangent, I, you, you I live like under women. rock. Okay. Yeah, but do you right. like women the right way? Uh, moving on. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, yeah... The question, of course, is what Valve's going to do now. Are they going to walk back on this and say this was a failed experiment? We are not going to really roll this out. Uh, the guys who made uh, Killing Floor 2 have updated their ELUA to say that there will be no paid mods to this game. Ball. Like you can. But this is, right now, developers have to say yes or no. Do you want paid mods through Steam Workshop? It's not like if you have if you say yes to Steam Workshop, you have to say yes to paid mods. It's an option. So what would stop... Uh, Here's the question, though. What stops a game developer from saying, yes, I want paid mods, and then hiding a bunch of shit behind those mods? Like, if, you know, releasing all those mods themselves later on as, like, 
you know, content. Like, hey, you guys can have this like, and that and the other. Perhaps thing. content that is downloadable. Yeah. Now the profit line wouldn't be very good considering how much Valve takes out of it because the people who are developing these things have zero fucking influence on what Valve does whereas game developers I think they only lose like 12 or 15 percent for every game Valve sells right so there's a little less risk there but you know why if you have a game and you're like say you're the creator of like a, a roguelike and you want to add a bunch of shit but you don't want to do it with DLC right do it with mods. Hmm. It stops you. Well, I, I, I think that kind of, you answered your own question there. It's just way more profitable to just put it out as DLC. Yeah. Like, I mean, we're talking the, to the order of like 40% more profitable. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I don't know. What do you guys really think about this whole thing? Is this a good idea? Is this um, kind of like the beginning of the end for Valve? No. No, because Steam is just such a great... It's so convenient, and that's the number one thing, especially with, with something digital, is convenience. And people know Valve, and honestly, the, the, the only reason that I can point to Origin that I don't like it is that it's not Steam, and I have to open something else to play other games. Huh. That's the number one thing. Granted, Origin isn't really that great, but... I mean... It's... I think Valve has a good history of like operating in good faith, and I think this will end up. What I what I think this will end up being is, oh hey, this guy made this mod. You can donate to him, or you know, or something yeah, like it's, that. Yeah, it's it's not a bad idea. It's just piss poor, you know, implementation mm-hmm. or execution. I mean, I, I I think I think Steam is making plenty of money, and what um, that? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, it's Gabe Newell's in the house yeah, just yeah, yeah, around. Yeah, yeah. I heard did, we talk Gabe? did we say Gabe in three times? Yeah. We say Gabe in three times. He comes and wrecks your house up and tells you to buy more Steam cards. Buy more Steam. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, good job, Arnold. Yeah. Um, that. But, I, I, like I said, I, I think this will end up being a uh, basically a donate button. I mean, Steam makes plenty of money. They, they 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 don't they don't need to make money from this too. I mean, Jesus, if somebody makes a mod for a game, just make it so. I mean, just kick them a part of the game's profits or or something, you know, something, something. Yeah. Like um, um, like I mean, oh God, and, oh, I, I really hate that my brain just took me down this path. But there's a mod that we all know and love and hate and love love to hate called Daisy <laughs> and it paid mods there was a day there was once upon a time a time where that mod was good and uh, I don't I can't I, yeah I mean just just extrapolate the previous argument with that because I don't want to talk about Daisy it just makes no. me sad yeah and you know it'll be it'll probably be a while before we see this all play out I don't think Valve is going to just say Okay, that didn't work. Let's just back off. Personally, I think that that's what they won't do that uh, because they've gone out and like thrown uh, thrown their efforts behind stuff that didn't immediately work out. That they just kept. I mean, Valve itself, people fucking hated it. Like, you seriously are gonna say I can't buy Half Life Two or any way but through this thing? Like, are you for real? And today, it's like everyone's favorite goddamn internet service. So. I don't know. We'll see where it goes. Yeah, I hated Steam when it first came out. I'm like, why can't I have my my uh, CDs? I want to have all my games on CDs. Oh God, have you seen the uh, <laughs> Have you seen the pictures of Grand Theft Auto Five DVDs? No. It's like seventeen of them. Wait, really? <laughs> yeah. Like you open the box and it's just like boxes and boxes of GTA DVDs. No fucking way. Yeah. That thing took forever to fucking install. It had to do like finding space on your system. And I'm like, oh, there's plenty of space. I don't know what your problem is here, game. And then it like loads itself in. And it, it, when it, it's like a 60 gig file, because Rockstar is not very good. And the Max Payne 2 was like 45 gig. Max Payne 3 was like 45 gigs. And uh, I don't know how. Uh, I, I think th- it was. Yeah, I said, heard it was because. You said something about it having different. Uh, Different 
texture files for every resolution. Yeah, that was someone had mentioned that the game appeared to have uh, instead of like upscaling texture files or downscaling them as it were, they just loaded brand new textures for every resolution because Rockstar is. Uh, I heard reports from inside Rockstar. I think I mentioned it on one of the podcasts. Is like this guy was a, a contractor there for a couple of years. They are absolute and total console fanboys. And, like, it's always a fight over what's better, Xbox or PlayStation, within the office. And if you say PC, they're like, PC's not for real gamers, and they tell people to get out. It's like, those are the people coding these games. They do not care about optimization. So, I guess they're they coding really it think. on a console, oh, a then? A Mac, yeah, of course. Yeah. Mm. But, uh, Three Toes, you've played the game. One of the things, and I want to see if you feel this, too, Grand Theft Auto uh, parodies and satire... They uh, suck. They're really bad at that. What What do you mean? Uh, I'm gonna say the uh, the mission where you go to the Life Invader office and the like, the CEO of Life Invader is up on a stage and he's like, "We have the youngest workforce in the country, 14 years old," and like all this other stuff. And it's like he's clearly supposed to be Steve Jobs. Yeah. And it's just like you know, there's a point where the satire. It's like the Man Bear Pig episode of South Park. Yeah, well, like, they, they completely abandon like any thing. kind of subtlety, which mm. that that's what makes it funny. It's when it's like subtle and you yeah. kind of maybe don't catch it at first. Yeah, but yeah, over the last like the last two Grand Theft Autos, it's just gotten balls to wall ridiculous, and yeah, it's just it's just not funny. Yeah, it's uh, it it bugs me that that like they rely so heavily on that in certain areas, uh, but at the same time. You have a character like Trevor, who is absolutely fucking brilliant. I love Trevor. Yeah, uh, it's yeah. Very clearly, somebody was walking, watching a lot of Jack Nicholson movies and was like, I could do that, and came into the studio and just like threw the craziest series of lines he could out, and just, he nailed it. So, the guy who does Trevor is amazing. At it. I haven't played, the, uh, played it, so you want to tell me about Trevor? Trevor is um, so in the the lore of the game in the in the canon yeah, there are like of the, three protagonists <laughs> right right and Trevor is the third one well he's the second guy you you play as total in the game because there's a prologue chapter where he and uh, the first guy you really play or... <sighs> okay so you start off the game in this place called North Yankton which is supposed to be like North Dakota uh, by the way I I really get bugged by the fact that. Uh, the song Hollywood Nights is in that game, where you're clearly driving around the area called Vinewood, which is supposed to be Hollywood. But anyways, um, <laughs> come on, attention to detail, detail, Rockstar. You had so much time, and they do such a great job with all this, the little details in the world. Right. I don't know how they didn't pick up on that one. That's... Man, that sounded really, really picky. Uh, but... <laughs> so... The game starts out, you're in this place called North Yankton, which is North Dakota, and you're robbing a bank, and you play as Michael, who's uh, in the main story mode. He's kind of a, a criminal in an ad hoc witness protection program that he was running with Trevor at the time, robbing banks and everything like that. He cut some sort of deal with the FBI, and he got into this you know, informal witness protection. Trevor, meanwhile, was Michael's best friend, and kind of went crazy and no one knew he was kind of living off the grid for years and you're introduced to him when uh, Michael gets back into robbing banks or well a jewelry store in this case and says something to a guard that alerts Trevor to him being around. Trevor is now living out in like the wasteland of the sta- of Los Santos and is like a massive meth dealer slash head and is absolutely absolutely fucking out of his mind. Uh, just, you know, starting gang wars and shit for the fun of it and, you know, knocking people's trailers into the river and then executing them. It's, uh... Hmm. He's a fun character. Really, it really is a brilliant character. Like, just... Oh, yeah. It's a lovable sociopath. And if the funny you can, thing... Like, that's the best way I can describe it. And the funny thing about him is, is that you actually you're kind of like, he's kind of a good guy. <laughs> like, at the end of the day, he does all this terrible shit, but he's, he's like, super respectful of women, and, like, tries to do the right thing in some cases, and... In some you know, cases. Well, you can deliver 
you can deliver uh, random strangers to a cult up in the mountains mm-hmm. when they ask you for help. Uh, so, and they will, it's suggested eat them alive. Oh. So, <laughs> sometimes he does nice things, but you know, it's he's he's a really interesting character. Whereas, uh, I feel like Michael, he's having a midlife crisis. He's you know, he's having a midlife yeah. crisis. That's yeah. his thing. Franklin, he's a young guy. He wants to prove himself. Trevor is this really complex and interesting character, and um, it, the fact that you can jump in between these guys and do certain things with certain ones is kind of neat. Uh, but, you know, Trevor being such a fucking huge dick and, like, dominating those two guys in the trailer park that are trying to help him out. And, one of whom's and, a juggalo. And one of whom's a juggalo. He does show up in juggalo paint at one point. What do you mean? Great. What do you mean dominates like, them? Like, he just... He berates, like, he plays, he's sort of like their hero. They're these two guys who are in their 30s, and he just shows up, and they're like, oh, you're the best, Trevor, and, like, talking about how he was an awesome Air Force pilot when he never was, and all this other stuff uh, that he'd fed him over the years, and they just, like, they, like, basically, have you watched Trailer Park Boys? No. Okay, there's two characters in Trailer Park Boys called Corey and Trevor. And they are these two younger guys who look up to the three main protagonists, and it's like they're just like dogs. They're just like puppy dogs to these guys. They think everything they do is the best. They'll go to jail for them and all this stuff. That's what those uh, Ron and Wade are to Trevor in the game. It's absolutely amazing. Like you can kind of see a really weak personality just falling under Trevor's like uh, influence, the way he's played. Hmm. So uh, yeah. It, it's a really. It, on top of that, it's a a fun game to play. Uh, there are a, on the PC there are some technical issues though. I don't know if you've heard of those. No. Uh, so for example, if you have certain characters in your Windows name, the game won't launch. I don't know why. It just doesn't. Uh, <laughs> the there are massive issues with frame rate, even if you turn down a lot of your settings. Hmm. Uh, and I have a computer that, according to NVIDIA's, uh, you know, best guess technology or whatever the fuck, uh, the optimal settings are, like, very high and ultra for everything and high-level anti-assailing, all this stuff. And uh, the game will constantly dip from 60 frames to, like, 40 or 30 if it... But you'll be riding along the highway and all of a sudden the game will just completely hitch and then unhitch. You're like, and then you'll be crashed into a. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, there's there's texture pop in, there's object pop in. It's you're just watching it going. You know, you might want to consider this. Like when you're making this game, you gotta optimize a little bit for the PC. You can't just make it look really nice and go, okay, that's it. You know, hope you have a really powerful computer because uh, we did, huh. and, and call it a day. So, I don't know. It it just bugs me that in the year of our lord 2015 you had three years to work on this fucking game and you still didn't do it all the way and Rockstar's uh, Rockstar's customer support has been told uh, their policy right now is someone calls up with a technical issue hang up on them hmm. that, not a joke uh, so yeah Grand Theft Auto 5 I'm probably going to keep playing it until I get really bored of it somehow um one other thing, Call of Duty Black Ops 3 was both announced and then had a release trailer uh, or a, a gameplay trailer is posted. It looks like Titanfall. There's like <laughs> wall running. There's wall running and shit. And like, uh. It's Titanfall mixed with Advanced Warfare. Like Two games that were released last year that no one fucking plays anymore. Mm-hmm. So congratulations. You've already killed your game. Yep. But who knows? Maybe they'll do something different. Uh, but I, I really don't feel like talking about Call of Duty now. Oh, nah. uh, what what what's what's new with Call of Duty? Something happened with Call of Duty? Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just keep pretending it doesn't exist until it's a- actually upon us. That might be the way to go. Oh, wait. I I I'm, I I know I know it might seem like the goony or, or or hipster thing to do, but I really haven't heard anything about Call of Duty, and okay, I, I'm actually so... really pleased about that. 
Black Ops 3 was announced uh, last week. It was leaked out that it was coming, but, I mean, fucking come on. Right. You really need it leaked? It's like, hey, guys, I'm going to guess, guess what? Guess what? It's coming out next year. Uh-huh. Guess what? Guess what? It's going to be Ghosts 2. Ghosts. Calling it now. Yeah. And then after that, Advanced Warfare 2. Yeah. And then... And then what about Modern Advanced Warfare Oh God! Yeah, you just jump back and forth between postmodern advanced warfare. Oh God! Yes, <laughs> cubist advanced warfare. We're just gonna keep <laughs> impressionist warfare, <laughs> Dutch masters warfare. Actually, that might not be a bad idea. Uh, so, uh, the last game, Advanced Warfare, you had like these bio suits, or you had these like advanced exoskeletons, right? And you could jump over shit and run faster, and those are kind of the extents of those things. And Black Ops uh, in Black Ops 3 they've decided to go the Deus Ex route. And actually, the uh, Deus Ex team posted something to Twitter where they were looking at all the stuff Black Ops 3 was offering, and just like they posted a cat, like, staring at the, the, the screen. <laughs> like... Because it was seriously, like, if you looked at the new Deus Ex trailer, it's like there's this wait, whole controversy. Wait, 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 What? Yeah. New Deus Ex Deus Ex Human Revolution has a new trailer out. Wait, huh? Like the game that's like three years old? No, there is a new Human Revolution coming. Ooh. Adam Jensen returns. Okay, I'm 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 okay with that. Deus Ex is probably one of my favorite game universes. So, yeah. And, uh, and it looks, but, it, it's not a gameplay trailer, so uh, fine, but whatever. I mean, be aware. Hey, they did all right with the last one. I mean, not, I, just because of nostalgia alone, like there's no way they can beat the original, but it's still good. It's they good. actually said no boss fights in the new one. Really? Yep. No, they they because people had so many issues with boss fights in the last one. Well, yeah, you uh, they, they were the characters you you couldn't actually do a non-lethal run. Yeah, because you had to so kill the bosses. So they have completely removed those from the next game. No boss fights. Hmm. So that'll be interesting. But the Deus Ex thing, uh, you know, what they're going to do with the next game is basically, hey, there is this huge controversy over enhanced Americans and all this other stuff, like inv- advanced humans, like the idea that you're going to modify yourself to get special abilities and uh, have mechanical parts and everything like that. Hmm. The... That's the same fucking theme that Black Ops 3 decided to go for. Wait, really? I kid you not. Their their uh... announcement trailer was seriously like, in 30 years, someone's at the Olympics and they're running on bionic legs. And it's like, the fastest woman ever. And she's got like, you know, big, giant fucking machine legs on. It's like, holy shit. Dude, that, they, but they I mean, that's gonna thing. happen. <laughs> I, mean, I don't... But the... The, both games went for the same theme, but Deus Ex Human Revolution, at the very least, makes a lot more sense doing it, considering that's what, you know, the Human Revolution the first was after. Uh, it was kind of courting that uh, question of what happens when this happens. Um, but Black Ops 2 was just kind of a weird thing, but they give you a bunch of powers, and you can run on walls, like in Titanfall, and like all this other stuff. So, Yeah. Right now, they have, kid you not, all three Call of Duty series are set in the future. Either a couple minutes or a couple decades. So, there is no longer a modern warfare. There is no longer, uh, you know, a here we're fucking fighting in the Middle East over whatever the fuck they've got left. Uh, you know, go through this area. It's no longer that stuff. It is straight up like small unit tactics, special forces, bionic replacements, and bullshit. Like, that's such a weird change for Call of Duty that started out as a World War II shooter, then moved into the modern era, and now is, like, so stuck in the future that they couldn't get out of it if they wanted to. Well, I mean, how many different... It's like the... Do you remember the early 2000s where everything was a World War II shooter? Oh, yeah. The the worst time in the world. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, they could, now the market market got flooded with uh, modern shooters, and now it's going to be postmodern shooters. Yeah, but you know that Call of Duty is just 
like straight up strangling that market no matter what. Mm-hmm. Even if they release the shittiest game of the year, and they have, um, and Advanced Warfare was not well received by a lot of fans, and the people who would normally be like really big supporters of this game six months later have dropped it completely. Mm. Um, but you know the point is like, is the Call of Duty cash train over? Hell no. That game still sells more money. It, it, the, the Call of Duty franchise makes more money than God every single fucking year. Like, they could buy the Catholic Church had they need to with just the money from Call of Duty, which yeah. is good because that's the only thing Activision makes anymore. Um, but they have three studios working on Call of Duty games now. Th- that's just mainline. Like, they have Infinity Ward, they have Sledgehammer, and they have Treyarch. All those guys make are Call of Duty games. Yeah. You have saturated the market. That is your own goddamn fault that you did it. Because you just kept going, like, every year we need to have a shooter out, guys. Even if it's every two years or every three years you have a game out, you know, take you know if you take your time, don't make it a cookie cutter, people will be more receptive to buying your games every year. Yeah, and I mean, that's a lesson that uh, Battlefield used to follow. You know, Battlefield was like an every two years, every three years. No, it was never like that, though. That, that's the thing. It was every two years... But there were years where they released games back to back. Like if you look at the chart and everything, it's like you know, Battlefield 1942 came out, and then immediately there was Battlefield Vietnam, and then a year and a half after that they had Battlefield 2, and then a year after Battlefield 2 was whatever the fuck Battlefield 2142, which got labeled as a mod of Battlefield 2, and then like two years after that Battlefield Bad Company but Battlefield Bad Company 2 came out two years after that then Battlefield 3 came out a year after Battlefield Bad Company 2 then Battlefield 4 came out two years after Battlefield 3 and like yeah like look at that look at it that way there is no there, there was never with Battlefield there was never a here's where this comes it comes out every two years in November uh, the way that Call of Duty is every year in November the Battlefield guys at one point had multiple teams working on multiple games that were kind of ready towards the release date with a few patches that were kind of okay, too. Uh, but, you know, Hardline didn't really need a lot of patching to get it to run properly. God, so that, I felt that, that, is the, that. that is the king irony for me. They finally make a game that doesn't need patching, and it doesn't sell. Yep. I mean, well, I mean... They, they, learned, they learned from their mistakes, and no one... And now they're paying for them. <laughs> <laughs> no, what they needed to do, learn from their mistakes, release a game that worked, and then people go, hey, the new one worked, and then profit the next time. So you just basically sacrificed a game to get decent sales next time and people believing in your franchise again. Mm-hmm. Congratulations. I mean, I, I don't know about you, but the reason, reason, well, I mean, you got Hardline. The reason I didn't get it was that, you know, I loved Battlefield 3. I loved it. And I didn't love Battlefield 4, and I and really, I couldn't point to you, point a reason out to you. It's yeah. It, it just people awesome. seem to have a hard time with that one, actually. I, and I, I don't know. I don't know why. I mean, because did I have fun in 4? Yeah, I did. Is throwing people amazing? Yeah, it is. I mean, are there a lot of really fun things? Yeah. But I mean, I, I can't put my finger on it. Uh, I think your big the big difference is that you are no longer a big fish fish in a small pond. Yeah, yeah. That, that, I mean, that's probably that's that is probably it, really. Like the expo, we've already talked about this in a couple other videos and uh, between us. But Battlefield Three on 360 versus Battlefield Four on the PC, like the people on the Xbox 360 are near retarded. Yeah. No matter where you go, they are just like borderline Forrest Gump like below average intelligence close to not being able to feed themselves yeah. and the fact that they figured out how to put the game in the disc tray and turn the game system on is kind of impressive so once they get into a game you should just leave them alone uh, but on the PC these guys have I don't know if it's more time or there's more skill involved or what it is but these guys just on the PC will wreck your day, and there's very few people who are just going to be terrible at the game on purpose or something. I've flown like, for a cumulative 10,000 hours across all Battlefield titles. Oh, God. Yeah, there's definitely some people who are like that on the PC. But, you know, if you want to just jump in and have fun with it, Battlefield Hardline's pretty good, Battlefield 4 is pretty good. But 
It really bugs me that you can't shoot tires out in Battlefield Hardline. We're beyond this. Um, yeah, that's actually... Yeah. Yeah, that would yeah, be an interesting fuck. mechanic. What the fuck? Well, you can always uh, sabotage trucks or cars. So you can go up to a car, and if you're a mechanic, which is the engineer equivalent, you can put a device on the car that as soon as it gets like five five feet from where it started, it blows up. Mm-hmm. So if someone tries to grab the car and go join the fight, they uh, get fucked over. See, that's pretty great. That, that to me is so much better than mines. Yeah, well, there are trip mines. You can do the same thing with trip mines, but it's a little harder to detect. Trip mm. mines are great. Trip mines are better than... Uh, trip mines are way, way better than uh, claymores because the, you can place them in such a way that people will never see them coming. Mm. Yeah. So are Anyways, they like slams for people? Sort of. Yeah, I would put it that way. They're proximity mines, or they're they're trip well, they're trip mines. Oh, you say so proximity you past... mine, and I think golden eye, and I just get a, like a like a chub. Oh god, like I, I don't even start. Out. Oh, all right, we have to fucking end on that note. Uh, so thanks for sticking with me, guys, through this uh, hour long rant I had about Steam games and Grand Theft Auto. No odd job. Uh, <laughs> no odd jobs. No odd jobs. Slappers only. <laughs> uh, so next week, hopefully. Uh, we'll come back and have something to say. Maybe, if we're lucky. Maybe. Maybe. Huh. Uh, so, uh, any last words, guys? Roll tight. No watch Arnold. 1v1, no 360, no 360, no scope. 420, <laughs> hashtag weed lord. Uh, fucking good night. <laughs> <laughs>